Hare Krishna. What is the Bhagavad Gita perspective on the LGBTQ plus pride parade? Answer, I'll focus on the T part, the transgender, as a thread of thought to explore the interface between the LGBTQ issue and the Bhagavad Gita's wisdom. The reason for focusing on the transgender part is that that is gaining more and more prominence in today's world and especially in the Western world, there are puberty blockers and transgender hormones and surgeries being also done and being actively promoted. So the Bhagavad Gita offers us a worldview by which we can look in fresh light at various things in the world, even if those things may not be necessarily mentioned directly in the Bhagavad Gita. So the Gita is not just a set of verses. It is a wisdom that is outlined in the form of a worldview through those verses. So I'll summarize how the Bhagavad Gita could interface with the LGBTQ plus issue uh, with an acronym APT. A, P, T. So A is acceptance. In the past, people who with non-standard sexual orientations were often stigmatized, persecuted, and uh, condemned. And it is only in the last few decades that they have uh, started coming out and being able to be accepted in society. Now, every living being just by being a living being, needs and deserves acceptance. Everyone that the Bhagavad Gita explains has an essential core that is spiritual and inviolable. And no matter how they are situated at the physical level, that spiritual core needs to be respected and not just accepted. So from that perspective, everyone deserves a place in society. In the Indian society, people of the non-standard sexual orientation, they were called in Manusamhita, Tutiya Prakriti and eunuchs have always had a place in Indian society, for example. Now, specifically, one of the reasons why people from the transgender orientation or the broad the LGBTQ uh, orientations were stigmatized or demonized was because they didn't fit in the religious worldview of mainstream religions in the West. That the idea was that you, God didn't create people this way and therefore your feeling this way is just a feeling that you need to overcome and you need to get rid of, you need to correct. But there there can be and there are people who right from their birth just have, for example, no attraction to people of the opposite uh, gender. That's homosexuality. There are people who feel profoundly uncomfortable and incom in, in, even incompatible with the body that they are in. And that's what leads to the transgender phenomena. So now the Bhagavad Gita explains such phenomena by stating that in the place we are right now is not just a result of God's creation. It's also a result of our actions. We are spiritual beings who go through multiple bodies in the process of transmigration, which is going from one body to another body, and reincarnation, which is coming into the new body. So normally, when a person, this is one body, and they go into another body, then generally, the pre there is a clean break where the previous body is left behind, especially in terms of conscious memory and conscious uh, functionality. The person leaves the previous body behind and comes to the new body and identifies with that body so that they can function through that body. But in some cases, especially it may be when in cases of sudden or violent death, or in some other exceptional situations, sometimes when the soul goes from one body to another body, it still carries with itself on its psyche, in the mind, certain remnants 
of the previous body which significantly alter the functioning in this body so this could be called as transmigration lag just as there can be a jet lag when we suddenly go say from america to india at that time our body is physically situated in, in india but the body's biological clock is still functioning as if we are in america so similarly when the transmigration lag occurs at that time a soul may not identify with the body that it presently has but may continue to identify with the body that it previously had in its previous life and because of that either it could reflect one's uh, sexual attraction may be different from the body that one is in normally or it could mean that one doesn't feel comfortable with the body at all so by giving a philosophical explanation for why such phenomena might occur in terms of the bigger world view of multiple lifetimes the gita gita's world view helps us understand that such people are not considered wrong or evil or and they certainly should not be demonized everybody gets a particular kind of body and a particular kind of relationship with the body based on their past actions and everybody has to navigate with the hand that they have been given and nobody should be discriminated against or persecuted just because they have got a bad hand in this life or they have got a hand that is unusual or non standard so acceptability from philosophical perspective is something which the bhagavad gita offers and that is apart from the devotional perspective where everyone is always a part of the god and everybody needs to be affirmed for their core spirituality and divinity that brings me to the second point that is p prominence so the pendulum in the past was had gone toward one side of demonization and as a matter of correction the pendulum can very easily swing toward the other extreme that is glamorization and that is what is happening in some parts of the world and at least in some segments within the lgbtq com community and its advocacy at one level if members of these communities say that okay we are just like everyone else and don't dehumanize or demonize us we are like everyone else except in one area where we are different and acknowledge that difference accept that difference and go on with life and that's perfectly fine but sometimes not only is this that we are different and because society is not structured for our way of living therefore the entire structure of society needs to be changed so, yeah so what this what does this imply so for example now if we consider transgender there is a lot of uh, advocacy for children who experience some amount of discomfort with their body to go through processes for trans trans transitioning those can involve not just can involve hormonal treatment where they have cross sex hormones that can involve puberty blockers that can involve also surgeries where certain parts of the body are removed or certain parts of the body are amputated are implanted now here this can raise serious concerns why because from the bhagavad gita's perspective for the soul any body that it may have is different from its essential core from the soul and no matter how good a body might be there is always a certain level of incompatibility between the spiritual soul and the material body that it occupies and utilizes so everybody feels a certain level of discomfort or dissatisfaction with their body oh i am too short i am too tall i am too fat i am too thin i am too fair i am too dark and most people learn to manage that manage live with that discomfort and the bhagavad gita says that we all need to learn tolerance tam sthitikshya swabharat why because nobody has a perfect situation in the world the world is a place of dissatisfaction it is dukkhalaya everybody the condition of bodily embodiment 
is a condition of dissatisfaction, if not distress. And the way to deal with it is by tolerating. But when, say for example, transgender becomes very prominent, and when that is presented to, not only presented, but even glamorized to young children, then what may happen is that when they are feeling uncomfortable with their bodies, then they may start thinking that maybe the solution for my discomfort is to change my gender. Uh, all children or many children go through various phases in their lives where they may cross-dress, they may experiment. Teenage and youth is a process of understanding who we are, discovering who we are, even from a perspective of existing as embodied beings in this world. So during this phase, if just gender transition is promised as a quick fix, then there may be people who who may do the transition and that may not fix the solution because it's just a quick fix. They may have deeper issues to deal with. And many times this involves serious uh, physiological changes which are irreversible and can have severe ramifications. And based on 61 systematic studies being reviewed, the British Journal of Medicine has stated that there is great uncertainty about the results of puberty blockers, cross-gender hormones, and surgeries for young people. And yet, this is being presented as a solution to children who are having any kind of discomfort with the bodies, with the bodies that they have. And to this, especially young girls are vulnerable because we live in a society where girls are taught that you are just equal to boys in every way. But when they hit puberty, then there's a sudden growth spurt among boys and there's nothing similar among girls. And when girls start finding that I'm physically not the same as a boy, and especially when there is a lot of image consciousness, uh, which is there for everyone, but all the more so for girls, then they may start thinking that maybe I should transition, maybe I'll be better off as a boy. And Abigail Shriver has written a whole book about our lost daughters, that how so many young girls are being allured towards this, induced towards this in unprecedented numbers. And there are cases of people who bitterly regret it. And uh, then if they try to do it, it transition also later on, it is expensive, it is painful, and it doesn't work. A girl who tries to become a boy and then tries to become a, a girl again, she may not be able to breastfeed, she may not be able to do many of the normal things that a person is able to do as a part of a meaningful and fulfilling life. So when this is when transgender is given prominence, the result can be that people may be induced to think that this is a quick fix to my problems. And therefore, while people who feel innately incompatible with their body should be allowed to live the way they want and should be accepted, no doubt, but people who are just having routine issues of growing up, uh, if they are, because of the prominence given to this, uh, they are induced to go through irreversible transformatory body transformatory procedures, that could have serious uh, counterproductive consequences. Normally, we don't consider, society doesn't consider, out of good reason, children to be sufficiently emotionally equipped or neurologically developed enough to make major decisions, life-altering decisions. Children cannot drive, uh, cannot get licensed they are 16, 17, till they are 16, 17, 18. And yet, these same children are given it's considered their right to be able to transition. Well, yes, the right of LGBTQ people to, uh, to be accepted and to continue function in society, that is an important right. But does that right supersede all other rights, including the right of parents to, and adults to exercise responsibility in guiding children? Sometimes in schools where 
LGB in, in America and Canada and some other countries where this has been made highly prominent, the LGBTQ and the acceptor, diversity, inclusivity, equity are, may, are very important criteria. There, children are encouraged to transition even without informing their parents. Or if they go to therapist, the therapist tell their parents that your children, child may commit suicide. Now, there is no evidence that, uh, no tangible, clear evidence that just because of this being allowed, not being allowed to that, somebody will end their life. Or that being allowed to do this is going to end all their problems. So giving prominence can lead to unforeseen and uh, not only unwholesome, but catastrophic consequences for individuals. So from that brings us to the third, so the third point that we don't want the pendulum to go towards the extreme of demonization, nor the extreme of, of uh, glamorization. The APT acronym T is transcendence. The Bhagavad Gita explains that Ultimately, our core being is spiritual. We have bodies and we live through bodies. Yet our existence is different from those. And different people feel different degrees of discomfort with their body. And those in the LGBT category, they are, from the Gita's perspective of the soul's relationship with the body, they are at one end of the spectrum in the degree of discomfort or discomfort with the body but it's a difference of degree not of category and what does that mean that often material existence embodied existence in a physical body is compared to being in an ocean and in an ocean there will always be waves now if the waves are slight and gentle we could consider that part of the ocean to be peaceful and if the waves are giant and forceful, then that part of the ocean is considered turbulent. So for people who have a slight degree of discomfort with their bodies, they are in the gentler part of the, the calmer part of the ocean, the gentle waves. People who have a large degree of discomfort with their bodies, they are like in the more turbulent part of the ocean. Now naturally, if somebody is in a turbulent part of the ocean, they will want to go to the calmer part of the ocean. And if they are told you have no right to go there, you have to stay there itself, they will rebel against it. So people from the LGBT government uh, community, those who right from birth or who do very innately feel themselves incompatible with their bodies and their body sexual orientation biologically, they can be said to be in a very turbulent part of the ocean. And they shouldn't be forced to stay in that. They need to be allowed to come to a part of the ocean where they will be calmer. At the same time, even the calmer part of the ocean is not going to be calm forever. There also turbulence is going to come. Even people who eat well, who stay fit, who look good, who have a comfortable relationship with their body, relatively speaking, will still have their bodies aging, will still eventually have some disease or the other. So every part of the ocean is prone to turbulence and is going to become turbulent. So while being in the ocean, the main purpose is not to campaign and agitate and fight to get from one part of the ocean to another part of the ocean. It needs to be to get out of the ocean to the solid land, which is the place beyond turbulence. And that solid land is spiritual realization, is realizing our identity as spiritual beings. To the extent we can realize that, to that extent, we will actually be fulfilled. We will find our existence being peaceful and meaningful and purposeful. So this, the Bhagavad Gita says, is the ultimate coming out. The coming out that needs deserves to be the highest celebrated is not just the coming out in terms of gender or sexuality, but it's uh, coming out of our spirituality. It's realizing and uh, relishing our spirituality. So. The ultimate solution, the ultimate Bhagavad Gita insight on the transgender issue is that don't campaign against it, don't campaign for it, but strive to go beyond it. 
rather than transgender we need to transcend our gender we understand the gender is a bodily feature and while we have to functionally do the requisite for engaging with the aspects of the body that we have such as its gender or its sexual orientation but our core life identity and our ultimate life is beyond our biology beyond our psychology beyond our bodily embody, bodily encounter bodily situation and that transcending our gender is the ultimate guideline of the bhagavad gita for us to find a life where we won't have any existential discomfort or dis- incompatibility but where we can find wholeness and fullness and richness in our life thank you hare krishna